What is central bank digital currency, commonly called CBDCs? Look, if you're worried about the potential risks of using central bank digital currency or you're unsure of what it means as the economic impact, I'm going to be taking an objective look and I'd highly encourage you to stick around for the four main points that I think are the main problems of CBDC. What are the chances that Canada is actually going to use CBDC in the future? And When's that going to happen? The first issue with CBDC is this idea of privacy and data tracking. Certain transactions are subjected to a regulatory oversight through FinTrack. All financial institutions must comply with these regulatory reporting requirements and every financial planner also is subjected to those FinTrack reporting requirements. Now a decentralized currency dispenses with the need for this threshold. There is no threshold for a decentralized digital currency to have a reporting. And again, this comes back to the regulators. They don't like not controlling these transactions. A centralized CBDC, it will give them the power of oversight and regulation into every single transaction that you do. I don't think that there's a lot of Canadians out there that are wanting a nanny state. They're not pro sharing data for everything that you do. Can you imagine somebody saying, hmm, where, why did you spend money over there? What did you do over there? That's essentially what the government is going to become is some sort of moral authority in our spending habits. Problem number two with CBDCs is the shift in government policy. There's a real danger of financial instability with the advent of CBDCs. Monetary policy will become less effective if you have an unlimited amount of money flowing through the system, especially when it's all digital. Banks will no longer be subject to the controls of their clients. If clients can no longer withdraw their money and use it in cash, then banks can have an unlimited amount of money that they can lend out. This is going to create other problems in the housing market if there is more stimulus than is really needed in the economy. Government stimulus can be immediately dispersed to the people with a couple of keyboard strokes very simply once a bill has passed. That has the power to speed up the volume of money which also has a minor effect on inflation. CBDCs also have the power to roll right in to universal basic income, which will punish savers for their discipline, saving for that rainy day. If universal basic income comes in, CBDCs could also have a time expiry date. That expiry date would say that you have to spend this money in a certain amount of time. And that's going to be a problem for those people who are trying to save for their future. The next issue is that cash may be completely eliminated. And that's going to affect people like your babysitter. There will be no more cash transactions or cash prices offered by your contractor because every transaction will be subject to tax. The third main issue with CBDC is data control. What happens if, as the IMF have, has suggested that they are coming out with a single global unified monetary token. Is all your spending data going to be collated and collected and stored in a foreign location? The rules on this and the precedent that it sets it's going to have major impact for our constitutional freedoms, for our sovereignty, and I believe that it has some significant issues for globalization of political power. People who are pro-CBDC tend to be people who are supportive of larger governments and larger interventions in the economy. People who prefer cash, privacy, and even people who believe in the decentralized cryptocurrency story tend to be people who understand the benefits of smaller government and less intervention. If we do go with a global unified digital token, what does that mean? That means that we have the ultimate in a world dominated economic system where somebody else in a faraway land who doesn't know anything about you is going to make decisions for you. In my view, 
the best place to store all your spending habits and your profile about your spending is as far away from the government as possible. These people are no less corruptible than anybody else and I think that when you centralize control that leads to bigger problems. Jumping off from my last point, the fourth issue with CBDC really rests in this idea of centralization versus decentralization. A centrally produced CBDC is very powerful and can put an unlimited amount of financial power in the hands of politicians and bureaucrats. And if it's true that the IMF is going to come out with a global unified monetary token, then those countries who participate are essentially giving up that sovereignty over their own currency to a central globalist type of system. At the end of the day, governments do not like decentralized and unregulated money and CBDC will give them the ability to move into a more controlled and regulated economy. Further on this issue of decentralization versus centralization, I've got a quote from a friend of mine, Rick Rule, investment guru and battle bank founder. The idea that governments, which from my point of view are too powerful and too inclined to war and too inclined to abuse today, would have a tool that would allow them to eliminate people's savings, people's medium of exchange and people's wealth if those people didn't behave in the way big thinkers wanted, and that's terrifying. Before I get to my final point about whether CBDCs are actually gonna be implemented in Canada, if you're enjoying this content, I would highly encourage you to subscribe and listen in to a lot of our other really important, great content from our advisors from across Canada. If you have questions about the infinite banking concept and how it may help you provide a more prosperous future for you and your family, go to our website, ibcanadagroup.com. Find an advisor licensed in your area to help educate you on how the infinite banking concept can work for you. So the final point I'd like to make about CBDCs, is it really gonna be implemented here in Canada? Just a few days ago, the Bank of Canada released a discussion paper saying that Canadians have weak incentives to start using central bank digital currency. Most Canadians have access to a bank account. We have access to debit cards and credit cards. But based on the weak incentives, it doesn't appear that Canadians are too thrilled about reverting or switching to a central bank digital currency. The U.S. Federal Reserve also, I've got this statement printed out here, their tweet on April 10th, 2023 said that they would not, quote, make any decisions on issuing a central bank digital currency and would not do so without clear support from Congress and the executive branch. They also suggested that, quote, CBDC would not replace cash or other payment options. Now, on the other hand, on the other hand, Canadian Finance Minister Christia Freeland said a few years ago that she was really looking to unlock preloaded stimulus. She was worried that we weren't spending enough. CBDCs could give them the incentive to put an expiry date so people are forced to spend their money. Quite frankly, I don't see any additional risk of CBDCs greater than any other government created currency. Whatever assets that you have right now will still be exchangeable in whatever the government monetary system or monetary unit is, be that digital or be that digital cash, because we're already kind of using a digital currency because not a lot of people are transacting in cash. We're transacting most of our things with electronic payments anyway. Any asset that you're using with your cash now would still be a valid asset to purchase with a CBDC, and that includes a tax-exempt life insurance contract that can be used for the infinite banking concept. In the issue of retaining our sovereignty and control over our money, we really need to ask the question, whose permission do I need to use the money that I own? With infinite banking, this is one asset class that gives you absolute control and permission. The people that you ask is you you control your own system of finance. And to find out more, I'd encourage you to find an advisor in your area to lead you through that mentorship process.